What's up everybody? John from Old Reading Farm here. Thanks for joining us. In today's video, we're gonna do a little sawmilling. We're gonna do a little talking about wood. We're gonna take a little walk through the woods. I mean, it's gonna be a great time. It's gonna be one of those videos where I just blabber at the camera. So I hope you're ready for that. Let's get into it. All right, so I'm down here at the sawmill. I'm just uh, doing some, this is silver maple slabs. And I just noticed my, uh, my blade is kind of cutting in a little bit of waves, but it's, really, but it's really only by the knots. So I also think maybe I just need to change the blade. So maybe I'll do that. But before that, Let's take a quick walk through the woods and I'll show you how I pick a log to mill. So the first thing you're gonna look for, and also if you look at this log, it won't be this, is you wanna look for a nice straight log. So you can see with this one, you see how close it is to the end of that bunk there and how far it is here. So there's a pretty solid curve this way. This one also curves back out and then there. So it's got kind of an S curve to it, which is not ideal when you're sawing logs, but since I'm just making some one inch slabs here, it doesn't really matter. So there are five main things that I look for when sawing logs. Species, diameter, length, naughtiness, not naughtiness, and straightness. So obviously the first thing that you look for is the species. So depending on what you're doing, you know, you might, you might be making like a, a table or some furniture or something like that, in which case you'd want a hardwood like oak or cherry, something like that. This is a great big oak we have right here. We actually have a lot of oak in Connecticut, a lot of oak and maple. As you can see, we got a nice big maple right there and a birch. But so anyway, your project is really gonna determine what your species is gonna be. I've found also, so this is, I believe this is a birch tree right here based on like the bark and overall birchiness of the tree. And I found that in my experience, birch does not mill well for me. It just, it cups and it twists and it bows and it just turns into a potato chip, you know? Just not flat, all curved and no good. So where you just saw me sawing, saw me sawing was uh, my previous setup on uh, my permanent or more permanent setup is going to be back here obviously going to need to do some work on it there's a lot of trees over here but i wanted to show you this because this is going to be a good example of why i think we're kind of lucky with where we're at so if the number one thing that you look for with the tree is species number two is going to be diameter let's take a look at some trees. So if species is number one, number two is gonna be diameter. So this is a pretty good sized tree right here. 
I would say it's probably a 12 inch diameter. There's like some, you know, way you can measure the outside and divide by pi and add the radius R squared and you come up with the actual diameter of it. But you can also just sort of tell by looking at it that this will be a fine log. You know, probably get a couple four by fours or two by sixes out of that. The diameter of the log is going to determine how much lumber you can get out of that tree. You know, so if you have a six inch round diameter, if you're cutting, you know, rough cut boards, you're not going to get six inches of boards. You're going to probably get four inches. And there's also some crazy mathematical formula that you can do to figure out what you can cut out of each log. There's math for everything. Pay attention in school, kids. So following diameter, you have length because obviously you want a nice long board. Who doesn't want a nice long log? You can't make a two by four by 12 out of a two by four by six. You can make a two by four by six out of a two by four by 12, but it's always better to start with a longer piece. Now, it always also depends on what you're doing. Like we have, we're gonna be doing uh, fence posts for our alpaca pastures. And in that case, we just need the posts to stick up four feet out of the ground. So, so I have a bunch of logs that are six or seven feet long that wouldn't be good for like dimensional lumber that I'm using to build barns, but they'll be perfect for fence posts. So I'm holding on to those, but I know what's gonna come of them. You know, so if you're building a barn and you need to make a 12 foot span or 16 foot span, a seven foot log isn't gonna do it. A 10 foot log isn't gonna do it. You need a really long log. Now my sawmill can take up to, I think I can mill up to 16 foot five inches. That's the absolute longest that I can mill without doing something sketchy. So that's, you know, usually what I'll go for. Um, in my area, I have a lot of people who actually own tree companies and have to pay to dump logs somewhere. And I have one really nice guy who like brings me good stuff. He brought me some really good silver maple. Um, and he brought me some, you know, really good other stuff, a lot of oak and then some firewood stuff, but that's okay. So anyway, the length is gonna also determine what you can obviously get out of the log. And the longer, in general, the better. So the next term I'm gonna call naughtiness, which I'm sure there's an actual real term for that, but I don't know what it is. But anyway, so that basically means how many branches a tree has in it. Because, so this one has this one, this one, this one, that one, a whole bunch of them. So, you know, this section of log might be great, but up here you're gonna have all of these knots and all of those knots are gonna be a real hardened piece of that log. And so it's gonna be harder to cut through. It's gonna be harder uh, to mill and it's gonna be harder to mill straight. Cause like I was saying before, when I, was, when I was doing my sawing, I would hit a knot and then the blade would move a little bit. Um, again, I think I have a dull blade, but that does happen. So it's better if you can have big sections that don't have knots. And so that's one of the situations in which I think we're sort of lucky because all of the trees on our property are, well, not all of them, but most of them are old growth trees and they all sort of grew at the same time. History of our property, uh, apparently it used to be a farm and then at one point they stopped farming and so all these trees grew. And so you can see here, so this big oak tree it goes way up there. So there's one branch right there, little tiny guy, and then way up there, probably 30 feet, is another branch. So you can get a really nice, straight, thick diameter log out of this and go, you know, all the way up there before you encounter a branch. So this tree would be a great one to mill because it's got a really nice diameter. You got a long stretch before you hit a branch. It's nice and straight. And number five, most important, it's nice and straight. Cause that's one of the things that when you're milling, the straighter the log in general, the less stress is contained in the wood. Because what can happen is when a tree grows up, and again, I am not an expert, so this is just me and my common sense. <laughs> when a tree grows up and it gets branches or whatever, for whatever reason, if it starts to curve, in the back side of that curve, i.e. the longer side, there's more tension stored because that's where the tree is really holding itself up. And I'm gonna see if I can find an example. Oh 
You know what? I got a good example. Hold on. So we were actually looking at this maple tree earlier. And so you can see this section is nice and straight. And then it curves a little bit this way. And then it curves back this way. And then it sort of gets straight again. And then it curves that way. So one of the most important cuts when milling a log is that first cut. Because what you're going to do is you're going to cut the bark off the top. And then you're going to flip it over so that it's flat on all the bunks. So that you can get, you use that basically as a reference for the rest of the log. So if you have a curved log to start with, it's much more difficult to get a uh, straight cut. And now, like you saw, the, the log that I was cutting is curved, but I'm probably just going to use that for little uh, signs that I'm going to try to carve because I just got a new Dremel tool, which I haven't been able to use yet. I've been so busy. But um, anyway, so that's fine for what I'm using. But if you're using dimensional lumber and you're cutting from a curve, generally what they say is you're supposed to mill either horns up or horns down. And what that means is if your log is curved like this, you either curve it horns up with the curve pointing up or horns down with the curve pointing down so that you can get a nice flat cut for reference. Now there's one other thing in terms of straightness that's very important and that relates to the tension in the log. So I'm gonna take a look at uh, one set of oak trees that I've had my eye on for a long time and sort of ex see if I can explain that to you. Speaking of straight trees, check this one out. <laughs> Just one big curve right there and then straight up. All right. So the trees that I'm heading for here are these uh, twin oaks right at the edge of my road. So I've actually had my eye on these two for the longest time um, because Catherine has wanted a log arch and I'll see if I can put a picture up of what that is. And I thought that these two trees would be perfect because they're approximately the same diameter, same species, same color, all that. So it would make a good match to, to match everything all around. Um, but then once we got the sawmill, I was like, wow, look at these super nice, super tall oak trees. But so one thing that I've found in harvesting your own trees in terms of straightness, it also matters how straight they are uh, in relation to the ground. So you can see both of these trees are leaning one way or the other. And so what that means is, so like this tree right here is leaning that way. So this whole side of the tree is holding the tension, keeping that tree from just falling over. You know, just like the physics of it, the wood that's on this side of the tree is, contains a lot more tension than what's on the front. Because you think about it, like you bend this way, the skin on your wrist is gonna be a lot tighter than the skin, I'm oh sorry, the skin on the back side of your wrist is gonna be a lot tighter than the skin on the inside of your wrist. Right? So anyway, so when you cut this down, and I would even bet that this would be a good uh, barber chair tree, so like when you're cutting it down, there's so much tension that this would kick back a lot. Because when you look at this, you know, so all the weight of the tree is up there with the branches. And this whole back side of the tree is really what's holding it together. So when you go to mill this, like, yeah, you might get a really nice straight long piece, but when you mill this, that whole cant is gonna release that tension and then curve again. So now there's ways you can fix that. I haven't been real good at it, so take your chances and I mean if you're listening to what I say good on you anyway but that's just something to keep in mind so the taller the the straighter that a tree is in relation to the ground the better because that means the tension is even all the way around and you should uh, be able to mitigate any cupping or bowing from there so that's that so I think I'm gonna get back to sawing Hope you guys enjoyed this little trip through the woods. It's been nice. Thanks for hanging out. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Please give us a like, leave us a comment, let us know what you think, and as always, please subscribe. If you have other tips for people who are sawyers or people who might want to mill some logs, leave them in the comments down below. Love to hear from you. See you later.